what I really love? Super Monkey Ball. You know what I don't like? Banana Blitz. And while I could easily complain about its flaws, I decided to reach out to my good friend and world-renowned speedrunner Ninja Star to aid me in today's challenge video. How much of Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD can you beat without jumping? Well, from the outset, it's not going to be an easy task. You see, Banana Blitz was originally made with the main gimmick that I and friends could, for the first time, jump. Breaking traditional Monkey Ball laws must lead to all of humanity into a downward spiral we will never recover from. So in protest, we're going to avoid jumping just to show John Sega that he can't push us around like that. Screw your shoehorn game mechanics. But there is one main problem with this. You see, because jumping completely changed the way Monkey Ball was played, it also completely changed how the levels were made. So now there is a lot more vertically oriented levels, which will prove to be a challenge. So the rules for this challenge are simple. Under no circumstances can we jump to complete a stage. If it's possible, we will mark it as a yes. If it's impossible, we will mark it as a no. And at the end of the video, we will show a percentage of what's possible. And with the rules, we're off. World 1 Stage 1 takes us to Monkey Island, and it doesn't get any easier than this. Stage 2 is more or less the same as the first stage. After we cross the bridge, we have once again secured an easy victory, and nothing is gonna stop us. Stage 3! Uh-oh. Well, challenge is over! Yeah, so we have officially hit our first roadblock in Banana Blitz. This wall is 100% absolutely, positively impossible to get over. It doesn't matter how much speed or what angle you go at, it's just impossible. With that, we will have to take this stage as a loss. Yeah, so once again, we cannot jump over this in any way. It's almost like the devs want us to use their crummy new gimmick. But no, Sega, you will not force us to use this. With that, we will take another loss. We may have lost the battle, but we will not lose this war. Stage 5. We face nothing challenging much. All we gotta do is just go over the bridge, over the hills, and we're on our way out to another easy victory. Stage 6. So, this stage is all downhill, so you really shouldn't have much to worry about. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The bonus stage is a big circle, and thank god the devs did not force any platforms into this. Just swing your way around the stage, and we got ourselves another easy one. Stage 7. So while this stage is straightforward, we do face a sizable gap. And on my first go through, it did catch me off guard. But come back to it with enough speed, and it's basically child's play. Stage 8 is once again a joke with these weak birds trying to blow us away. But we're going to continue on anyway. So the boss of World 1 is impossible. Even though the bird's head goes really low, there is no way to bounce up and hit its head. I've tried everything possible. I've tried going around on its wing, maybe I could bounce up, everything possible. Unfortunately, unless you jump, there is no way to beat this one. Actually, there's been a breakthrough. So, Ninja being a glutton for punishment, discovered that if you own the PC version of Banana Blitz HD, you get to use two exclusive new shapes to roll in. A cube and a pyramid. If we go into the boss, using the pyramid, we actually have a chance to beat him. When he slams his head into the ground, he can clip into our hitbox and basically hurt himself. All we have to do is position ourselves and repeat the process. Overall, World 1 was a cakewalk. Only 2 out of 10 stages were impossible, and I have a good feeling about World 2. So, take it away, Ninja. World 2 starts off with some more varied level designing, while Savage would simply jump to the other side. Us sophisticated primates shall patiently wait and roll forward. Stage 2 is where we hit a few bumps in the road. <laughs> Literally. Just keep going at a slow speed and you won't fly off. However, when we reach the final stretch we face a problem. Papa Sega thought he could block us off with his wall. But us intellectuals simply walk in a path that no monkey has done before. In stage 3, Yanya and I decide to go down these hills and reach a steep incline, but unfortunately she's just too small and pathetic to make it up. Therefore, she was sold to the local circus and we enlisted the help of Doctor, who has the strength to make it up, leading us to an easy victory. Stage 4 looks fairly simple until you get to the end. There's a pretty large gap that seemed impossible to cross at first, but later I came back to this hole with Gong Gong and figured out that if you let the spinning pegs hit you at the right angle, you can get enough speed to just barely make it over. 
from the outset, this all looks like a giant pain. Like, look at all those logs in the way, this is going to be such a huge problem. Or, we could just take this small path here and skip it entirely with a low place bump. The World 2 bonus stage is again super easy like the last one. Just follow the spiral and you're done. Stage 6 is literally just a straight path and a bridge. Putting my level design gripes aside, just take your time and we're done. Stage 7 is mostly just you going downhill. Towards the end you'll encounter some seesaws. At this rate I'm about to name this one Bridge Zone. Stage 8 is where the funky stuff starts. Things seem easy enough until we get to the end of the path. I was afraid there was no way up, but after a low time roll, the rings apparently are bouncy, thus letting me get up there jump free. The boss, Evan being a janky mess, is impossible because you have to jump on the missiles that hit them back, and there's not really a good way to do so. We tried even climbing up to the top to try to hit the missiles from there, but it didn't seem to work. Maybe this one is possible if you're like, insane, but we couldn't do it. Overall, World 2, while basing and design, gave us a flawless victory. We completed every stage with no jumps and had a fairly easy time doing so. Don't get used to that. Heading into World 3, we're greeted with some classic friends. Bumpers! Other than the bumpers being annoying, just take your time. Or rush like I did and climb another victory. Stage 2 is pretty straightforward. You can slowly follow the path or do what I did, pulling off some sick tricks and making this daring jump over here. Check that out. Stage 3 is pretty self-explanatory. This is just straight up impossible. I mean, look at that. Stage 4 starts off with our favorite bumper boys, but after we weave through it, we come face to face with some bridge gaps. Now, however, if you have enough speed or you just got a good angle, you should be able to just bounce right through. Stage 5. So this is where the crazy RNG jank comes into play. You see this level here? It's almost impossible to get around these logs. There is no room to go around them, and to make matters worse, you can't bounce over them. So after many, many failed attempts, you know how we did it? By pure chance. You see, Sonic is special in this game because he has the highest top speed and bounce. So by waiting exactly one second, we wait for the log to line up and we go full speed ahead. If done right, you'll go fast enough to bounce off the log, giving you enough momentum to fly over to the other side. But be careful, because even if you do make it over the gap, over the broken bridge, you still need enough speed to make it to the goal, which is in midair. It's almost like the devs still want us to jump. Weird. Regardless, if you have an hour to spare and two brain cells, you can really make this across. Stage 6 is a breath of fresh air compared to the abomination that was the previous level. After you get over the rolling hills, be mindful you'll need enough speed to make it over the bridge. But don't be dumb like me and you'll make it in easy. Bonus! The bonus here is actually really easy. It's basically a repeat of the first world, but in a bowl shape. Stage 7. Ooh boy. Okay, Stage 7 is a pain. To clarify, so far every level we have shown off is a yes or no. However, as we get into some of these later levels, we're going to have to add more of a technically category. What this means is that the level is humanly possible, but it's so absurd or difficult that we had to splice it together to work. Kind of like a segmented speed run. Now, back to the level. While it's extremely hard to find the right angle to bounce out, once you do, there's a few pesky snowballs to deal with. Roll past those and you'll come face to face with the bridge. This gap is just wide enough where it's impossible to cross. We've tried speed, bouncing off the sides, and even riding the wooden rail, but it seems the gap on this stage is just too wide to be possible. However, you see in Banana Blitz HD, as opposed to the original version, it has collision on each of the wood pieces with every bridge, which normally when you're playing the game is an annoying feature, because you can just bounce around like this out of nowhere, and it makes going at high speeds very irritating but in our case, it may just make this level barely doable. So, after many, many hours of rolling down this bridge, this finally happened. This level was a pain, but somehow we did it and I'm just glad we're out of here. Stage eight brings it back to easy mode where all you have to do is follow the narrow half pipe down and mine a gap or two, making this the last one for world three. And let's not forget the boss. The boss, uh, can we censor that? 
Anyway, getting past the snowballs is easy enough, but once you get to this bloke, there's no way to bonk that bulging, plus infected bulbous of a weak spot, thus making this another impossible stage. Again, we have another breakthrough. With the power of the pyramid, we can give this boss another go. And while we don't have much mobility, it's still easy to maneuver around. Now, after the boss does this long spin attack thingy and slows down for a brief moment, he slumps forward for a few seconds. Now that we have a larger hitbox, we can just barely hit the weak spot with the tip. Rinse and repeat, and we beat this boss. Overall, World 3 was pretty decent. We beat every stage, and we had one technical on the stage 7 with the wacky bridge. But other than that, we can move on, saying that we have cleared this world 100%. World 1, Stage 1 brings us to the heated desert. And as usual, this all consists of going forward, bouncing down some steps, and we're done. Now, Stage 2 is a bit more complex. It starts off simple as we go through some bridges and down the occasional stairs. However, things take a turn for the worst. After the last bridge, make sure you have enough speed to bop over this gap. And that's where we're stuck. The goal is at the top of the steps and there's no way up, making this one impossible. Stage 3 is straightforward and seemingly impossible. It's really funny because in the original version of Banner Blitz, there's actually a small ramp you can just walk up. Why did the devs remove that? I don't know, but we shall rise to the challenge. In only what can be described as pure luck, with enough speed and a few lucky bounces, we made to the goal despite this impossible ledge. Screw you, game dev. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> this one is so insane that we need to show a replay, just to show that I did not jump at all. Stage 4 seems pretty nice. There are quite a few bowl-shaped platforms, but they're simple to get through. It'll take a few tries, but if you have enough speed and get the right angle, you'll barely bounce right in. Stage 5. I think this one's self-explanatory. Easy win! This one is unfortunately impossible. With no way up the steps, it ends here giving us a fail. Cursor non-spherical compatible exercise. Stage 7 starts off pretty bare, then we're hit with steps again, thus making this all impossible. You know, I'm beginning to think these low designs kind of ran out of ideas and just threw stairs everywhere. Stage 8 is once again laughably easy. Just imagine you're playing Sonic Forces and hold forward to win. I like that. That's a good joke. So the bonus for World 4 actually isn't that difficult. Our biggest enemy was doing it all in 60 seconds. One thing I don't like about this game is that if you fail a bonus stage, you can't redo it, even in free play mode. So, starting this stage, we start from the top of the big pyramid, and we can bounce down these stairs pretty easily. Now, you would think getting back up to the top would be a pain, but these conveniently placed boosters actually let us glide right back up to the top. Once at the top, however, we do need to make our way back down as fast as possible to pick up more rings on the outside. Repeat this process, and you should just barely with enough time to complete it. The boss of World 4 gave me a lot of hope, as each part is broken into sections. The first section you can just roll through, the second one is easy to avoid the moles. The third one has this whack-a-mole section, and while it's tough, if you have enough speed you can just roll inside and bonk them. The fourth section is where we get stuck. Just like the boss in World 2, there's no way to bounce on the missiles, and we're forced to time out here. And no, it's not possible to make the missiles run into the cannons by running around. You have to bounce them back, thus making this impossible. Overall, that ends World 4. While we had a few bumps and bruises, we still beat half the levels in this world. Now, surely it can't get much harder than that, right? I mean, World 5 looks pretty easy. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, the answer is everything. Everything can go wrong. World 5. So, to start off, we're already in a bad position. No matter how fast I go, or what angle I take, I can't get over this ledge. In about half an hour of attempts, I called it quits. This one is impossible. Stage 2 looks pretty promising. We make our way up these ramps and come face to face with this beam here. Now, normally this would be impossible, but I found out that if you hit it with just enough speed, you'll bounce on top and you can cross over, like this. Now, all that's left is to cross the gaps with the swinging platforms and get to the end. Alright, so we're almost at the top, we make a few more turns, and... oh no. So, we made it all the way up here to the top, just to be beaten by a mandatory jump. Honestly, this really hurts, we made it all the way up here, and this is the only space we cannot get up. Even though we had to overcome all that, we will have to take this as a loss. 
but we were very creative. So for stage 3, this is going to seem like I'm full of BS, but I can't get out of this starting circle. There was not enough room to bump over it, and unlike the previous worlds, there was nothing to help us get out. So we're going to have to call this one impossible also. Alas, we have an update in post. So, once again, playing the PC version of Banana Blitz, we utilize the power of the pyramid. So, after some funky maneuvering and lucky bouncing, we can flip over the side and just coast along those wavy steps. Now, after we do that, to make matters worse, there's another circular platform we have to ride the edge of to prevent getting stuck. But once we've cleared that, we're doomed to lose our progress due to a timeout. But this happened. That was incredibly stressful, but we managed to pull it off, and I'm just happy it's over. Now for stage four, I think we're starting to see a theme here. There's no way we can get up those steps, and honestly, this is another impossible stage. So, stage five. You wanna see something insane? So at first I thought we were completely stuck, as most steps are impossible to get on top of, but Gon Gon saves the day. So, with him slamming into the steps, we actually get just enough bounce to get on the ledge and roll up the side of the stairs. Now, to top it off, Gon Gon's special ability is that he can destroy bumpers. So with that ability, once we get onto the spinning wheel, we can actually clear this wall of bumpers by just bumping into them. Everyone else would have had to jump, so Gon Gon has saved the day for us and helped us snag another victory. So heading into stage 6, I thought things would be simple since the level looked mostly flat, but I was wrong. These simply don't give us enough speed to get the air we need to get over these discs on the ground. The bonus for this world is sadly impossible. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, it would have been nice if the steps maybe had moved, but nope, once you go down, there is no getting back up. Stage 7. Once again, more impossible junk I am not even going to touch. And for stage 8, here we are once again, stuck in the starting area. Really sad. So, the boss for World 5 looks like it could be possible in a task, but at the moment it's not. However, I did get one lucky bounce off of the tentacles, but otherwise, you're just gonna run out of time. There's no way to consistently bounce and hit the back of them without getting through. Overall, World 5 was a disaster in every way in my opinion. From false expectations to being outright forced to jump, we made almost no progress and failed almost every stage. So I hope the devs are happy they have levels that are actually utilizing their main gimmick. Hey, thanks for watching part 1 of this video. When part 2 comes out, it'll be right over here. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and see you next time.